Hi, I'm Stacy Tamaki, and I'd like to welcome the Japanese Center for Michigan Universities to my Tiny Gami Studio. Today I'll be showing you how to fold an origami butterfly. It's a fairly simple model that begins by folding the paper in half four times, meaning diagonally from corner to corner. So you'll have a crease pattern that looks like an X when you've completed those two folds. And then you'll open the paper and you'll fold from the midline of each side, making the shape of a rectangle each time. And then you rotate, do it again from the midpoint, and put nice solid creases in once you have the paper aligned. And I'd say don't rush. It's never about speed. When you're folding origami, precision is so much more important. And then take the paper and take an outer edge and bring it up to the center fold line but don't go over. You stop just short because you don't want to overlap. Now in the traditional model you would repeat those two folds two more times but one of my pet peeves about the traditional model is you'll end up with vertical crease marks that go straight down the center of the upper wing so if you look here, I'm not going to fold that fourth column, that section with a diagonal crease line. I put my finger in between the two sides of the paper and only crease the first three columns. And that eliminates the vertical line in your finished butterfly. And then I'll repeat and do that same step on the other side folding now only the three columns to the right and not folding that first one. It's a small detail, but as you can see, it makes a big difference. I think that is the most important thing. The other modification I make is adding those little antennas that you saw in that picture. And if you don't believe in cutting paper when you fold origami, that's fine. You'll still have a beautiful butterfly. But if you'd like to add that aesthetic detail, this is the time to do it. I fold the paper back in half, and in that section where we omitted that last fold, I'll take a very fine, sharp pair of scissors, and I start short of the corner. I don't go all the way from the outer edge. And I just cut in very carefully, starting shallow at the beginning of the cut, but angling the scissors just a little bit to make it deeper towards that center line that will become the head of the butterfly. So as you can see, now I have these two little antennas that are just going to be there. I don't give them any more attention now until we're done. Instead, I'm going to focus on these outer corners, pinching them where the diagonal line already exists. And once you begin pinching, the paper just knows where to go. And that bottom panel, I'm going to move upward and beneath the left and right panels so that it just kind of disappears. It's hidden. Now, those two bottom points become the lower wings to the butterfly. And again, I'm not going to fold that paper all the way to the edge. Instead, I'll crease those diagonal lines on the other side and pull outward and push downward at the same time. And I end up with this shape, which kind of looks like a sailboat. Those are the top wings. If I turn the model over, you see there's already a crease line there. I fold all of that on that crease line now I have a butterfly form, but it's just a blue triangle with no differentiation between the upper wings and the lower wings. So to take care of that, we flip the model over and there's no um, what's called a reference point, but you'll see two square shapes, two small triangular shapes. 
The side section is free of the front of the butterfly and I'm going to pull that little bit and fold it, increase it back. That's what creates separation for you between the top wing and the bottom wing. So you can fold that as much or as little as you want, realizing that that's the purpose of the fold. So if you want larger lower wings, make it a shallow fold. If you want um, smaller lower wings, make it a deep fold and then match the fold to the other side. The next step is to make the body and you do that by folding the whole model in half away from you, which is called a mountain fold. If you fold it towards yourself, that's called a valley fold. I pinch where the head is very, very firmly and then use my other finger to push against the underside of the butterfly up towards my fingernails. And doing this creates the body shape. And I'll usually use my fingernails just to push that shape in more cleanly. Now I can look for my antenna, which are still there. I just haven't thought about them much ever since I cut them. And I just like to very gently pull them up away from the body so that they stand out and they add just a little delicacy, which is what I love about them. And that's your finished butterfly. If you don't do the antenna, simply using a printed paper also adds elegance. Or you can learn to make more complicated butterflies. This is my favorite book by a master designer and artist, Michael Abbas. Thank you for dropping by the Tiny Gummy Studio. I hope this has been a fun and creative session for you and that you may continue to fold more origami in the future. Take care. Bye.